Hey, what's up guys? Spencer Rhodes here, and this is my review of The Walking Dead Comics, issue 171. Okay, so last issue we had the big reveal that Sadiq was Rosita's boyfriend, and she was pregnant with his child, and that was the big cliffhanger. Eugene seemed to piss in that last issue. And we start off this issue with having Sadiq continue to explain that you know, he really loved Rosita and Rosita really loved him. And um, he's really upset. Like, I don't really like Sadiq, but I almost kind of like him this issue because he's just so upset. It's, it's kind of hard not to feel for the guy. Like, he's had to keep this whole secret. And his explanation kind of makes sense. You know, he thought that once Rosita was dead, he didn't need to tell Eugene. It would just cause more pain, and it would be better to just have him never know. But Eugene saved his life, and Eugene did so many useful things. Sadiq felt guilty for not telling him. And Sadiq is just crying. He's just, he's, he's just really upset. And Eugene has this flashback of Rosita telling him that she did not love the, the guy. She did not... You know, he did not love her, and, you know, she really loved Eugene, and it was stupid for her to cheat on him. So what Sadiq is telling Eugene is completely different, that he and Rosita loved each other. So I think we kind of have that conflict with Eugene. I think maybe eventually Eugene will realize that Rosita just wasn't that great of, of a person. I mean, she did cheat on him, and he never... You know, he never really did anything bad to her, and she cheated on him. You know, it's just, maybe Eugene has put Rosita on a pedestal, and, you know, if Rosita loves Sadiq, and then Rosita tells Eugene that, you know, she did not love Sadiq, then, I mean, which one is it, you know? So I think Eugene is still really upset about Rosita, and he misses her, but over time, he'll start to move on and go in another direction. Because I'm, I, I think Eugene's story is far from over. I think Robert Kirkman has big plans for Eugene. We know that Eugene is one of Robert's favorites. He's said it many, many times, and Eugene has almost lived like 100 issues at this point. I think over 100 issues. Yeah, he's, he's lived almost 150 issues. And I don't think he's going anywhere. He's, he's too important. He's too smart. He's the smartest guy in the story. He can pretty much build anything, invent technology. You know, he's, he's the one that made the radio and got con in contact with people in Ohio. Sorry, I keep stuttering. But Eugene has a big role to play. I suspect his story is far from over. He's pretty much the most important, important guy in the apocalypse right now because he's the guy that can really help create things and rebuild technology and really help rebuild society. But in this issue... He's not as pissed off as I thought he would be. He seemed kind of cool with Sadiq. He seemed happy that Sadiq was telling him the truth. And Eugene and Sadiq seem okay. Like, they seem like they're still friends. So that's good. And that's pretty much that. The next day, they all get back on their horses, and they keep traveling across the barren wasteland of the city. It seems like there's no walkers, there's no people, there's nothing. And it's really cool to, to see this city. It's like nature has taken it back. It's it's covered in grass. It's cracked. It's old looking. It's it's really cool. We we've, we've never had a city in the comics that looks like this. We we've never really had like I guess we've had buildings and stuff, but we've never had a city that's like five years into the apocalypse that hasn't been cleaned. No one's been in it. It's just this wasteland. It's really cool looking. And it's really cool to have these characters in this environment. But they keep traveling and traveling. And they start to think, you know, maybe we should look for someone. You know, see if someone's around. Because it, just, it does seem kind of peculiar that there's no one here. No humans, no walkers. So Michonne starts screaming to see if there's anyone around. And out of nowhere, we finally get the girl in the cover page that we've known about for months, the princess. And I have to say, I thought she was white at first. On, on, the, on the cover of the issue, it looked like she was black. <laughs> I'm going to sound so racist for saying this, but I thought the princess chick was going to be black. She looked black, and looking back on it, she's kind of the same, cover, the same color as Rosita. Um, but she's not as dark as Michonne. 
But, you know, I thought she was going to be black. <laughs> like, okay, maybe she's not going to be as dark as Michonne, but she looks like um, Sonika Martin Green's color. You know, that, that vanilla chocolate mix, you know, that, that beautiful skin color. I, I thought she was going to be black. I, but uh, in the issue, on the page, she, she, she's white. Like, she looks like a white person. <laughs> and then I, I'm glad that they explained what her ethnicity was because she finally says that she's Mexican-American or Mexican. So she's Mexican. And so I guess she's kind of in between, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I sound so racist right now. But yes. So her name is Junita Sanchez, I think, and she wants to be called Princess. And supposedly, she's been by herself for a year. And she's kind of loopy and crazy, and not completely crazy, but kind of crazy. I have a feeling she's going to be kind of the comic relief. And throughout this whole issue, I was wondering, you know, is she a bad person? Is she lying? Does she have a big group of people that she's taking Michonne and the rest to? Is it, is it a trap? And Michonne wants to leave, and the four of them want to leave, and Junita wants to come with her, and Michonne says no. And she says, oh, come on, you know, you can trust me, you know, I'm not lying. I mean, I, I could kill a couple of you, but then the other couple of you would kill me. You know, I don't have a death wish because I wouldn't have survived this long. And she just goes on this rant. <laughs> There's this whole page of her just having like eight bubbles of text. She's just constantly talking. And Michonne's like, you know, do you usually talk this much? And she's like, uh, no, I just haven't had anyone to talk to. And she just seems really goofy and kind of crazy. And throughout this whole issue, I'm wondering, you know, it, you know can we trust her? So she finally convinces them to have her go along with them. So I guess Michonne and Eugene, Yukimo, Magna, Sadiq are all going to take her back to Alexandria if they start trusting her. So she gets on one of the horses and then she asks to go back where her stuff is and get her stuff. So I'm like, oh, is it a trap? You know, and you know, Michonne's not stupid. None of them are stupid. They're all, they're all wondering if this girl is laying a trap for them. And she goes and she goes to this building and then she yells and she, she, she's acting like she's telling a bunch of people that she brought horses and they all, Michonne and the rest of her group, they instantly take their guns out and point them at Junita and Juni Junita just starts laughing and saying she was joking and then she goes to get her stuff. And that was the end of the issue. <laughs> and I think, you know, we still don't know if she's legit or not. We, we still don't know if she's going to be a good guy or not. I'm leading towards her becoming a good guy, her becoming a major character in the comics. Because, for one thing, this whole issue is dedicated to her introduction. This entire issue is about the introduction of this one character. Not a community, not a small group of people, this one character. Sort of like Jesus. But she got like a bigger introduction than Jesus got. Jesus was kind of all over the place. It took like three issues to really understand what his character was about. And in this issue, we have no Rick, no Dwight, Carl, anyone. Just Michonne's five group, of pe group of five people. And then we meet Junita. So this whole issue is about Junita. So I don't think she's the, the type of character that is going to be killed off next issue. I don't think she's going to be killed off in a few issues. Um, I think she'll at least survive a few volumes, maybe 40, 50 issues. I think her character has an important role to play. I think we're going to really get to know her, and I think she's going to serve as a comic relief. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It could be next issue, you know, she's a bad guy, and then we, we get introduced to this new big group of villains. It's possible. I'm going to go ahead and theorize that she is legitimate and she is just this kind of crazy cuckoo clock survivor that has been on her own for a year and she's going to be important and serve it as the comic relief. And another reason why I believe that is because of the letter hacks. Robert Kirkman spends like the first page of the letter hacks talking about her and he says that she's going to be a big major character. Now he could be trolling he does that a lot with the comics. He trolls. He says one thing's going to happen and then it doesn't happen. You know, I think he did that with Negan and Alpha. He did that a lot of times. 
but I am thinking this is going to be a new big character because we haven't had a new big character in some time. I think it's been 20 issues since we've had a big new character. The last major character introduction we got was Beta. And that was almost 20 issues ago. So I think this character is here to stay. I think she'll survive at least a few volumes. We're going to get to know her. We're going to see her come back to Alexandria. You know, I think she'll she'll breathe some new life into the story, into the comics, and we'll just have to see where she goes. Um, my thoughts overall on this issue, it was good. It was, it was you know, it was a page turner. I, you know, I kind of wanted to know what Rick and Dwight were doing. But, you know, at the same time, we, we you know, we got to give it room. We got to give it, you know... We, we gotta let these characters breathe. We just have this um, new character. And the thing about separating all these main characters again is that we are going to kind of have, you know, one issue focusing on one group, one issue focusing on another group. I think, you know, next issue might focus on the Hilltop, focus on Carl, on Maggie. You know, then the issue after that will focus on Negan, Rick, Dwight. Then the issue after that, Michonne and Junita Sanchez and Eugene, they're all going to come back to Alexandria. We're going to just have, have it kind of go all over the place because an issue is only, what, 15, 20 pages? So they would, it's not like the show where it's 40 minute episodes and there's no real excuse to just have a couple of characters be in it. The comics are kind of different. If it's 15 pages and there's a bunch of different groups of people everywhere, you might want to have one issue focus on one small group, one issue focus on another small group. And since we're introducing this new character, Junita Sanchez, or Princess, whatever you want to call her, I understand this entire issue being devoted to her introduction. And it, it kind of, you know, it's kind of good that we've got this group of five people, you know, Michonne, Eugene, Sadiq, Yukimo, Magna, because three of them we don't know much about. Sadiq, Yukimo, Magna, we don't know much about them. We've had them in the story for like 50 issues now, and we don't know much about them. You know, so this is kind of giving them a, ch a chance <clears throat> to come into their own and be further developed and for us to get to know them better. And, you know, it's also a chance for us to explore some more of the world. We've, we've had most of the stories take place in the same small area for the past, what, 100 issues, 90 issues? It's been a while. We've had Alexandria for a while and Hilltop and... You know, the saviors. We've had that area of the world for a long time. We've had a lot of story in that small little area. So it makes sense to bring, you know, a group of characters that haven't been developed that well and to develop them more and also to develop, you know, more surroundings, more places in this apocalypse, this apocalyptic world and, you know, explore more communities and environments and see what's left of the world. You know, I think this is great. You know, I think... This is just, I think the story is going in a really good, positive, exciting direction, and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. You know, I'm still bummed about Andrea, but as far as the fact that she's dead and what's happening now that she's dead, I couldn't be happier. You know, I couldn't be happier. You know, if it were up to me, I don't know if I would want Andrea to be dead, you know, if I was the writer. You know, and, and Robert Kirkman said himself, it was a hard decision. And I, I know Andrea's been dead for a few issues now, but let's be honest, we're still, we're still feeling that. Like, we've, some people have been reading her story for 13 years. The comic started in 2013, 2003, sorry, and she died this year in the comics. So that's a lot of time to spend with her. She, she always will be probably one of the best characters in the comics. You know, she's a hot blonde. <laughs> but no, she was just such a badass. And it, it sucks that she's dead, but I think the comics are going to be okay. I really like what they're doing with the comics. I think now that she's dead, the comics, it, 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 it is kind of refreshing. I think it's giving all these new characters that we haven't spent much time with a chance to kind of come to the forefront and be developed further. And we've got this new interesting princess character and uh, you know, I look forward to knowing more about her. Also, she's pretty hot. I mean, <laughs> she looks pretty hot, man. Like, Mexican, man, just think about it. Like, in a few years from now in the show, we're going to have this character in the show. I'm hoping they're going to cast Michelle Rodriguez. I mean, just, I mean, the this character seems hot. Michelle Rodriguez is hot. You know, just, 
It, 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 it's a match made in heaven. Just cast her as the role. <laughs> Let's spread that around. Michelle Rodriguez for princess. Fuck yeah. But yeah, overall, I really like this issue. I don't have any problems with it. Um, I'd give it a 9 out of 10. You know, if you see this issue in your bookstore, buy it. You will not be disappointed. Just don't expect Rick or Carl or Dwight. Hopefully we find out what's going on with them next issue. <laughs> also, one more thing. I know this isn't relevant. I apologize in advance. But as some of you know, Dwight is my favorite character in the comics. And I'm a little frustrated that we didn't get any closure with that. <laughs> um, I'm still worried that we're going to get Darth Dwight and Darth Dwight is going to continue. I don't want Darth Dwight because Darth Dwight means Dwight might die. I feel like Robert Kirkman might be setting up the death of Dwight. And, you know, a, a good way to do that is by having this stupid Sherry bitch be the downfall of Dwight and turning him into Darth Dwight. So no Darth Dwight. Say no to Darth Dwight. Hashtag no Darth Dwight. We don't like it. I want Dwight to be a good guy. Anyway, that's my review of issue 171. I hope you enjoyed it. What did you guys think? Did you guys like it? Did you guys dislike it? What did you think of this new character? Is she trustworthy? Is she going to get killed next issue? Is she going to be the leader of a pact of bad guys or bad scavengers? You know, what do you guys think? Um, let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Bye. Okay guys, so let me know what you think of the new format with all the pictures. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? I thought I would try something different with this review. Would you like to see me use pictures for every review of every issue? Just let me know in the comments. And special thanks to Alberto Andrande. I hope I did not butcher your name, but he's the one that let me take all the pictures of his video. So thank you, man. Anyway, I will see you all in a month from now for the next issue of The Walking Dead. Bye.